Good evening, everyone, and welcome to historic Holman Stadium here in Nashua, New Hampshire. It is a beautiful evening for baseball, high school baseball, as Bishop Girton plays host to the Nashua High South Panthers. I'm John Collins, along with Tom King. The sun has disappeared for the moment here, Tom. Oh, it's, it's after 7 o'clock. <laughs> the sun is behind That's us, true. John. It's, it hasn't yeah. disappeared. It's behind you know, us. It's, uh, it was on the field for the warm-ups, but uh, not, yeah. not a factor here in this no, evening it's, game. It's, no, it's not going to be that much of a factor. It's the, 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 you know, the, the sky is a little hazy here, a little bit. You know, it's nice. It's not, I don't know. I mean, you making it sound as though all of a sudden it got dark. Yeah. So it's not. It's perfect, perfect uh, weather. But look at the field here at Holman Stadium. Has it looked any better? Ever? Pristine, beautiful. Yep, absolutely gorgeous. Not too dry and, and we got, uh, no and we, bad and, hops. And we got two good teams in Girton and Nashua South who probably look to figure somewhere 7, 8, 6, 5, anywhere in there. I wouldn't be surprised if these two teams see each other again down the road after tonight. Um, and I saw the pitcher on the mound. Sam Franco, uh, he's from Manchester, actually. He's a Manchester kid, and I saw him no-hit Alvern. Uh, I believe it was a six-inning deal. Uh, I think it might have been five, but I think it was six. Back in when we were wearing thermals. Back in early April, mid-April. Devin Sawyer with leadoff duty. Rips wow. one high and deep to yeah. left. It turns the left fielder around. And it's off the base of the boards. We saw Devin Sawyer do exactly this a few games ago as he leads off the game with a double off the bottom of the wall. Well, we saw him do it last Friday night. But as Kurt Gowdy always used to say, John, there goes your no-hitter. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he laid he into that laid pitch. He laid into that pitch. There's no question about it. Straight pull, got around on it. Pitch was a little elevated. Perfect, right in Dean Adams' wheelhouse. Samuel I mean, Devin Sawyer's wheelhouse, I'm sorry. Adams is the cleanup hitter. Adams may end up knocking yeah. him in, who knows? Here's Isaac Kravak, the, uh, excuse me, um, this is Jamie, Jake O'Connor batting Connor, second yeah. for himself. He's pitching in one, this game. One change yep. in the South lineup that, we've, that we had, hadn't seen before is uh, Tanaka, who's usually up in the order, second, usually first or second. He's ninth in the order today. Yeah, taking some pressure off him at the bottom of the order. Line drive, right field foul. O'Connor I'll tell you what, all I it. need to do is see those two swings, the one by... Sawyer and the one by O'Connor, and they are on Franco. Franco's pitches are up and out over the plate. He's got to be more uh, careful where he's putting them. Yeah, he's going to need better command to stay, uh, you know, away from the big inning. And right now, it's one in the making, thanks to Devin Sawyer's ringing double to begin the ball game. Jake O'Connor batting for himself, slightly open stance, waiting for the delivery from the left-hander. Samuel Franco, big curveball, doesn't find the top of the zone. And it is two balls and one strike, I believe, the count. One and two, John. One and two. He fouled one off down the line, I think. So the scoreboard's got one and two, but we'll see. Yeah, I thought I was going by Jeff Kleiner's fingers. Nope. He strikes out. Yeah. Fastball in the inside corner. Franco answers the call, Tom. You said he had a better command, and he certainly well, did on that Well, what he did pitch. there was he challenged the hitter, John Collins. He went right up and in on him with a fastball, got it in the inner half of the plate, and O'Connor, swinging defensively, strikes out. So Isaiah Hedquist to bat now with one out and runner in scoring position at Franco. And, yeah, all of a sudden now yeah. these pitches aren't like just, uh, you know, here it is, try to hit it. He is blowing it by these last... Uh, These last two pitches are blown up by the hitter. They play Isaiah slightly to pull in the outfield, and they pitch him away, yeah. swings through it, swings strike it two. The velocity, the velocity is, is there. So Franco getting mean with a runner at second base. Yeah, after seeing these fastballs from Franco, I'm pretty sure that Devin hit a changeup to Must've. left. Must have. Left it middle, too, and he didn't yep. miss it, but in danger of getting stranded out there the way Samuel Franco has stepped up his game with a runner in scoring position. The way he did last week, right? Got stranded on Friday night, I believe. Yeah, he did. Yep. In that game against North. Against Elias Bork. 
Elias Bork silenced a really good hitting South Lineup. It did, really, because this team can't hit the ball. The one two. Pop foul to the right. Now, in the last five or six pitches, that's the first contact we've seen, right? Yeah. So now, if you're Franco, do you want to come in hard again, or do you want to take something off it? His off speed stuff has not worked. I'd say, what, if he could show, throw the same pitch he threw to O'Connor, I think he would come yeah, inside in. Hedquist. Yep. Uh, oh, what Got a it. pitch. The breaking ball in the inside corner. It broke just in time. Just in time. Yeah, that was a beautiful pitch. And handcuffed it. You know, you're seeing some pitching from Sam oh, Franco you here, are. aren't you? Yeah. You know, it's just two hitters, but now Dean Adams lefty on lefty. Good challenge here. Yeah, it is. See what he comes up with in this matchup that would seem to favor the pitcher. Two strikeouts in a row for Franco. That's a strike. Yep. Goes away. Yep. Kind of one of those good, sharp breaking balls that looks like it's going to go inside to the hitter, and it breaks away over the outside part of the plate. 0 and 1. Let's see if he tries to back him up with the fastball here. Yo one. Hits the outside corner with the fastball, and it's a 0-2 count. Boy. Wow, one strike away from striking out the side. After giving up a monstrous double to left field on the first pitch of the game. The 0-2. Got him. Oh. oh, almost. And Tom, you you already mentioned you saw. Samuel Franco throw a no hitter, and there goes the no hitter. As you said, you quoted Kirk Cowdy on the first. There goes your batter. no hitter. Yep, first pitch gone. You know, I mean, but if, he's showing if, why he he threw that no hitter right here with this kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it, good stuff, and it was against you know an Alvern team that, that had been struggling at the time. Alvern's playing better baseball now, but they were really struggling back then. So any good pitching like that was going to handcuff him. He's 0 and 2 now. Let's see if he wastes one, but the, he, you know he's been in such good rhythm. You hate to see him just waste one. I think he might throw a curveball that breaks out outside. Yeah, he did, and it broke outside, yeah. way outside. But that was a waste pitch. Yeah. You know the thing now, is, is, as a lefty hitter, what I'm looking for here is a blistering fastball in my hands on the inside corner because I think he thinks he can he set him up. Oh, he missed away with he it. Took something off it and, and took strikes off. out the side. What a job by Sam Franco as left at second base is Devin Sawyer. We'll see what Jake O'Connor's got in store in the bottom of the first against these Cardinal hitters. That was impressive, Tom. Boy, I it mean, sure was. We'll see if he can keep that up. You know, I mean, that was you know, that that was pitching. You know, that was really good pitching. You know, he against, wasn't, yeah, good hitters, you, too. You know, he was, yeah, that's just it. It was against good hitters, and because of that, he wasn't just trying to blow it by him. He was trying to place it. He looked like Nathan and Valdi against the Oakland A's. Right. You know, he, looked really, <laughs> he looked really good. Valdi's had like 28 scoreless innings now. He threw a dozen strikeouts in his most recent game. and uh, He's hot or cold, John. You yeah, he get, is, isn't he? You yeah. either get really great stuff from him. Or, you know, or he basically lays an egg, one or the other. Yeah, but uh, great command there from Franco after leaving one out over the middle. It looked like it might be a long inning, and suddenly it wasn't. His uh, fielders got the rest of the inning off. Yep. To the bottom of the first we go, and South uh, will be on defense here, and Tom will set it for you. Cable, Caleb Rich behind the plate. Well, Caleb Rich is behind the plate. For, as John just said, uh, Sawyer is at second base. Third, yeah. Uh, you got him at third? Yeah, Dean Adams. Dean Adams is at third, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Tom. Let, go me, ahead. let me go, John. All right, you want me to set the defense? <laughs> let me set the defense. I, I just automatically thought third to first. But yeah, well, I'm just yeah. going with the lineup right now, okay? Yeah, okay. So Sawyer is at second base. Adams is at third. We'll go, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Isaiah Hedquist is at first base. The shortstop, Hunter Ward, in the outfield uh, from a left to, uh, actually, let's see, center field is Tanaka. He's the guy we, we really talk about all the time. So I'll make as, a great catch. As being a really, really, really good player. And is it Matson? Yeah, Nate Matson's yeah, in read left. That, I couldn't read that writing so it's Nate, on, the, on the card. So it's Nate Matson in left and Grant McCubrey, who has become a pretty good hitter this year, uh, 
the Vanderbilt commit. The he's big only arm, a and sophomore. Right. He's the big arm, and I think that yeah. big arm is going to suit him more even as a defensive outfielder than it is on the mound. Grant McCubrey is in right field. Shortstop Luke Anderson batting leadoff for the Cardinals looks at a ball just off the plate away from Jake O'Connor 1 and 0. Will be followed by Jackson Goldstein and Isaac Krivak. Fouled off to the left. The last time I saw this Girton team they put up a 17 spot. On Merrimack 17 2. Last Saturday, the day after we covered North South. Took a glance at the remaining games for the two teams. Don, looks like South's got the easier of the two schedules. BG's got to play Concord and Goffstown coming up next week, I think. Concord's not that strong this year, I don't think, are they? I believe they're near the top. Maybe it was somebody else. A lot of teams bunched within two games of each other. Yep. Londonderry's got the 11 and one record, I think. Yep, Londonderry's the team, Pinkerton's yep. tough. Uh, North just lost to them yesterday, 6-4 here. And the 2-2, two -two curveball, oh, top Anderson. foul, good spoil. Anderson got a good spoil is right. No doubt about it, very good spoil. So, Looking at the standings in Division One, um, we'll get to it after this. Another 2-2 pitch, and dances away from that one. So the count has gone full. Could have the game's first base runner for Girton, Devin Sawyer, with a leadoff double for South, stranded at second. Yep. And the leadoff batter trying to get aboard here, working the count. Luke Anderson, the 3-2, and that is also almost a ball that hit him. And a walk to lead off the ball game. And for the Anderson, will, you know, he'll move on the bases. So. In that leadoff spot. thought I was going crazy with the uh, NHIA websites kind of malfunctioning on me. I keep hitting the standings yeah, and it goes to the schedule. Uh, then it's probably, uh, they probably have another problem. Yeah. They, they've been on and they've been hit or miss all spring. Right. Well, look at the schedule, John. The schedule oh, here it is. The, sk the standings are, you know, clicked in. So there's um, a four teams that are 10 wins throw the first base. Concord is one of them. Uh, actually, it's five teams. Pinkerton, Winnicott, Concord, Goffstown, Portsmouth, all with 10 wins. Exeter's got 11. Lenadary's got 13 now. BG right behind that pack at 9 and 5. And South just behind BG at 7 and 5. South hasn't played that many games compared to everybody else. Or actually, Bert, Girton's played a lot. 14. South's yeah, played Girton's 12. played a lot. Yep. 0-2 oh now as Jake O'Connor tries to rebound from the leadoff walk. Ground ball foul. So far, Luke Anderson staying put over at first base. I, I get the impression doing these South games that the teams that play against South have a lot of respect for Caleb Rich's throwing arm back there. Yeah, because we haven't seen too many too many uh, runners, too many people try to run. You know? No, nobody seems to be challenging no. him. Of course, last week North was able to hit. <clears throat> yeah, you know, they got you know they were able to hit and. Derek Finley with the big game, so. Pretty modest lead there for Anderson. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a steal me lead. And no, he gets the free pass to second matter. base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jake O'Connor is overthrowing. Yeah. He's got to shorten his delivery, shorten his stride, and just kind of relax a little. Jackson Goldstein, Jr., tops that one. It's a 1-2 count still. Got the uh, two-man umpiring crew. Yeah, it's Jeff Kleiner behind the plate. I don't know from here who the base umpire is. Oh, curveball, which is pretty good. Waited on it kind of nicely, but then fouls Just it off to the out. right. Well, and I'll tell you. Uh, Goldstein is really doing a lot to stay alive here. Yep. 
Down in the count one and two. And in the meantime, he has seen just about every type of pitch that Jake O'Connor is throwing. Yeah. And Rich goes out there to go over what he wants O'Connor to throw here to try to get the out pitch. Again, here we are. Nobody out and a runner at second base just by different ways. One without a hit, one with that booming double back in the top of the inning. See if someone can can uh, can plate these runners. Time out. Jeff Kleiner gives it to the batter just before the delivery. Tom. Well, see if he. I, I bet that's the last gift that Goldstein's yeah. going to get like that. The one-two. Nice pitch. Just down. Two balls and two strikes. BG next playing Concord on the twelfth. Goffstown, Portsmouth, North to follow. That's a tough, that's a tough road. Foul and, ball and down the line. we should have that North game. That's a week from Monday. We should have, I believe we're going to have that on national TV as well. There was a team in the schedule. I noticed they played four games this week. Uh, I'm not sure that. It's baseball, right? 8, 9, 10, 11. They, they were scheduled to call for. Yeah, that is baseball. Well, that is, you know, postponements, John. Is, yeah, you know, they, they had to, they have to, they had to get them in. Got to get them in, so. And it's a nice weather week. Oh. Lofted to left. Just kind of reached on it. Yeah, and it's an easy play for Nate Matson. Yep. And that is the first out of the inning. A lengthy at bat for Jackson Goldstein, but he is retired. And here comes Isaac Prevac. That's a nice pitch by O'Connor. Took something off and had Goldstein out in front. And he was able to get the bat on the ball, but not able to drive it. So a defensive swing basically gives a lofted pop-up to left field. Londonderry's only loss to Concord, in case you're wondering, the 13-1 record for the top team. So Concord was able to come up with a nice That's win there. That's the best there. athletic team that Concord has. Because in all the other boy sports, they've really suffered. Ground ball off the bat of Isaac Krivak. Football wasn't strong. Soccer wasn't strong. Basketball was terrible. So they have not had the strong boy sports that they've normally had in the past. But baseball remains strong. That's a good program up there. All ones here. One ball, one strike, one out. Ooh, hit him. It checked it. He, oh, it, did it hit the it bat? missed his hands, hit the bat. Oh, it looked like it was targeted right for his shoulder. Well, that's because you're at a rough angle over there, no, Tom. You can see I, everything perfectly I, behind the plate here. I, I can see everything right. <laughs> I can see everything. That sure looked like it. And, and the sound, of course, sounded as though it hit bone instead of bat. There, there goes, goes the, the runner. runner. Throw to third. It's a good one. Yes. Not in time. Good head first slide by Goldstein. By and it's Anderson. a strikeout. By Anderson. Almost a strikeout throw out to end the inning. Uh, excuse me. Anderson. Anderson. Yes, the lead batter was Luke Anderson with the head first slide. So now you got Dom Monaco stepping in. He had a good day last week. I tell you what, that shows me something about Caleb Rich. That was a slow breaking ball. Uh, he almost got him. And he almost got him. Almost and he had a pretty good jump, too. Yeah. So runner at third with two out now. But you know what? I think it was important to get the runner at third base. Why? Because Jake O'Connor sometimes oh, will yeah. throw it to the backstop. Oh, yeah. We've seen it doing twice right. already in this inning. So that's why. And that's low, but Caleb Rich gloves it. Two balls, no strikes. Righty versus lefty here. The cleanup hitter, Dominic Monaco. Yeah, Haskell's on deck. He's a right-handed hitter. I would be careful with Monaco and, yeah, and senior. You know, just pitch around him a little bit. You know, senior, good hitter. Had a great uh, game the last time I saw him. I, I, that's what I would do. I'd pitch around him a little bit. Kind of went soft in the off the plate inside. There was much, not much Monaco could do but foul it. Two and one. Good nice block by, by Rich. Man. Oh, yeah, that saved a run. Cause zero, that, zero game. Because that was so low that that wouldn't have had the velocity to bounce back off the wall, uh, off the, uh, the wall behind them. No, it wouldn't have. The three, one. Swung on and missed. He challenged him on that one, and it counts full. Well, he's not pitching around him, is he? 
No. No, you're going to go challenge him? You're going to go challenge him. Good fastball by O'Connor. Probably the, his best pitch of the night. Let's see. Does he do it again or does he take something off it? Up. Wow. He overthrew it. Rich is going to get it, and the runner is coming, and he's going to make it. Yep. A good decision with no hesitation by Luke Anderson and the wild pitch bugaboo. And now James Guy is going to come out to try to argue the call. And that's going to be they to no that avail. They, they thought they had him on the ankle. I oh, for not sliding? I didn't, I, no, I, I didn't think that, uh, oh, no. that they, I didn't think they had him. He crossed the plate before, before oh, the tag. Oh, definitely, definitely did. definitely crossed the plate. Yeah. From this great vantage point that I have here, I could see clearly that his foot was down before any tag. Yes, but see, I have the vantage point of where he's headed to, John, <laughs> so I could see it that way. You, you know, you better be nice to me, John, because, because I stayed up here to give you color for the first inning. I missed a play at third and a play oh, at home. Oh, you ball. did. You missed all kinds so of action. So be nice, okay? Okay. Let's not let's not push it a little bit. All right. <laughs> Forgot about that. The the action. Oh, what's going on? Safe. Oh, you actually asked the other umpire. I'm impressed by Jeff Kleiner doing that. Yep. Yeah, Pete says that's why he has to keep us separate. No, you know what they might have argued. I know what this was all about. Tell it, me. It wasn't the play, safe or out. It was, did it hit the batter? That's what oh, that was about. Okay. Okay, because he pointed to first base, and then. It was a lefty batter. Yes. Yes. That's what that was all about. Did that hit the batter? Interesting. That's, that's what that was. It wasn't the call at home. It was the, it was the uh, hitting the batter. One to nothing, BG, on a play that was discussed and decided. But because of the wild pitch, it's a runner on the board. There's been no RBI in the inning, obviously. Right. Now you've got your cleanup hitter, Monaco, at first, with Haskell, a pretty good hitter, at the plate. Ground ball right side. Gonna see hit the oh, runner and he's out. He's out. Yep. That one definitely hit. See, Dominic I, was thinking Monaco. Send, I was thinking they should send Haskell because to get him out of that area and get him there. And sure enough, look what happens. He gets hit. We don't see that too often, John Collins. It happened to me once. Yeah. Running Deep. the bases just Deep. one time. Yeah, that, now Stinks. We know, now Take we a know, hit away now, from your now teammate. We know, now we know what happened to you. <laughs> so anyway, that's the end of one. It's one. Uh, one it, it's the end of one. It's one nothing in favor of Bishop Girton. It's DJ PDP plays the tunes, and I will go down the field to grab a couple of photos. The runner is scored as a put-out. The put-out credited to the closest infielder at the time he was hit. In this case, the second baseman. The runner being hit is the third out of the inning. The ball becomes dead. Yep. Good question posed here between innings. If you're keeping score in a scorebook, baseball scorebook, first pitch swinging through it for strike one is Grant McCubrey, the right fielder who draws leadoff duty for the Panthers, trailing by a run, one to nothing. Run scoring by a wild pitch that some say may have hit the batter uh, that was in the batter, batter's box at the time, Dominic Monaco. Ironically, it was Monaco that got hit by a batted ball as he ran between first and second. Batted ball by the next batter, Ryan Haskell. And according to the Google, and also the old ball game website, the way to score that put out is what they call it. The one two pitch, two balls and two strikes. The runner is scored as a put out. The put out credited to the closest infielder at the time he was hit. That'd be Devin Sawyer, the second baseman. Strike three called, balls in the dirt, throw to first to complete the strikeout. And piling up the strikeouts now 
Samuel Franco, that's the fourth strikeout in a row after surrendering the leadoff double to Devin Sawyer. So one up, one down here in the second inning. Here's Hunter Ward, the shortstop for the Panthers, getting his first look this evening against Samuel Franco. We are here on a Friday night, May 12, 2023, about two-thirds of the way through the season. Watching Samuel Franco spin another gem following a no-hitter he also threw. It's a soft liner gloved easily by the first baseman, Dominic Monaco, seeing a lot of the baseball lately. So he is um, the put-out credit to the closest infielder at the time he was hit. In this case, the runner being hit is the third out of the inning. The ball becomes dead, and the play has scored a fielder's choice. So even though that was going to be a clear single, for Ryan Haskell. Instead, it's scored as a fielder's choice and 0 for, <laughs> 0 for 1. Big swing and a miss, and down in the count, Hunter Ward, 0 and 1. Franco going right after these south hitters. That's a strike on the inside corner at the knees, one of his best velo velocity fastballs of the night. Franco, a confident looking left handed pitcher right now for the Cardinals. Popped up over our heads, and the skybox is here at Holman Stadium. 0 and 2. Let's see if uh, Samuel goes for the put out here and tries to maybe waste one out of the zone. He's got a lot of options with the kind of command that he has. Tailing fastball up and away, rather easy take there for Ward, but he's got to be on his toes. Franco is showing an ability to hit all corners of the plate with all pitches. Just down, one ball and two strikes to Hunter Ward. Nate Matson for South on deck. Fouled over our heads. And fastball makes him dance, ball four. And so on base to begin the inning for the Panthers. Nate Matson's on base. So after two were retired, Ward was retired on the soft liner to first. Matson draws a walk. So two down. Matson staring down the lefty, and that timeout was called just before the pitch, which would have been a strike over the inner half to Caleb Rich, the catcher for South, the eighth place hitter, batting with two outs here in the second. Foul, a uh, pop-up in the infield. And the shortstop calling for it. Luke Anderson makes the play, and that is the third out of the inning. So, another solid pitching performance by Samuel Franco. Just a walk, the only chink in the armor since the leadoff double at the beginning of the game. So one walk, one hit allowed, and four strikeouts for Samuel Franco as we go to the top of the third inning in a one nothing Bishop Girton lead. Brandon Rogers will draw leadoff duty for Bishop Gurdon, left-handed batter batting for the pitcher. They actually have a designated hitter here in high school ball batting for the pitcher. You see a lot of these pitchers batting for themselves lots of times. And the first pitch from O'Connor misses up and away. So the DH for the Cardinals trying to get on base and maybe double up their lead. BG taking a lead in the first inning on a wild pitch with two outs, just kind of like that. As O'Connor's had a little bit of trouble overthrowing the fastball into the dirt. Skips to the backstop. BG will send Peter Wilson and Jordan Delude to the plate. 
two and three in this inning following Brandon Rogers. It's a big swing and a miss on the outside changeup. Taken a lot off of that pitch, Jake O'Connor. So after firing the fastball down and in, kind of changed the, the eye view of the batter there. Kept him off balance. The 2-1. I think he went back to the same spot. Might have been the fastball that time. Two balls, two strikes. Good mix of pitches here in command by Jake O'Connor to the lead batter in the third inning. Change up, had him out in front. So what a mix there by O'Connor as he does some pitching of his own and gets his second strike out of the game. And that'll bring up Peter Wilson, right-handed batter and right fielder for the Cardinals. Wilson, a senior. South defending him straight away at all positions. Fielders haven't had to do all that much in this game. One of the putouts, as we described, was a ball that hit a runner running between first and second. That putout was credited to Devin Sawyer, even though he would tell you that he wasn't going to feel that ball. It was perfectly in the hole, headed for right field when it struck Dominic Monaco. One and one quickly here to Peter Wilson. Hits it high in the air, shallow center field. Tanaka's going to call off Hunter Ward and make the play as he gets a first touch in center for the Panthers. Two up and two down in the BG third. Here's Jordan DeLude. Coming up on Nashua ETV, channel 99 after this game or at 9 p.m., Whichever we can, right after the game or 9 p.m., the Nashua Athletics Department Hall of Fame ceremonies from last Sunday will be telecast following tonight's game. Quickly 0-1 here to Jordan DeLude as he gets some chin music there. Up and in, one ball and one strike. If Jordan could reach with two outs, it would be the nine hitter, Joe Riney. Jake O'Connor kind of mirroring what, swung on a miss, mirroring what Samuel Franco is doing. Pitching for BG, could get through three innings, uh, could get through this inning without seeing the nine batter. Strike three called, and that is the inning. No argument from Jordan DeLude as Jake O'Connor paints with a fastball, a one, two, three inning. As we go to the bottom of the third, the Panthers trailing BG one to nothing. So both teams have sent eight batters to the plate in the first two innings. Difference is a wild pitch by Jake O'Connor that plated BG's run. It was not a run batted in, but it is a difference in the game, one to nothing, as the nine hitter starts here. And where did that miss? It missed the catcher's glove and hit somebody. I guess it hit Jeff Kleiner's mask, but he didn't even flinch. One ball and no strikes as Samuel Franco uncharacteristically falls behind the count to a batter. In this case, it's Kosei Tanaka, who usually bats at the top of the lineup, batting in the nine spot here, the center fielder in the catbird seat, leading off the bottom of the third with a 3-0 count now. Franco trying to groove one, does. Three balls in one strike to the left-handed hitting center fielder, Kosei Tanaka. Would love to get on base. He represents the tying run if he can. Takes it high for ball four. Good leadoff at bat for Tanaka. And that is the second walk of the game for Samuel Franco. He did walk a batter in that second inning after having struck out four in a row in the first through second innings. So Devin Sawyer hit by, I want to say, the third pitch of the game off the bottom of the wall, where it says the 
VFW uh, post. What's an eye chart out there? Is that 483? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my optometrist. It's like, can you read the bottom line out there? Post, I think it's 483 on that left field wall where you hit the ball, the double. The 1 0. That's a ball, just misses. So 2 0. That's. Oh, there's two posts? Oh, yeah, you're right. The one on the left I was looking at, Nashua Post. I'm pretty sure the Hudson Post is 5791 from memory. That's a strike on the outside corner. So two balls in one strike. Batters perusing here, not swinging yet, against Samuel Franco. Tanaka with the leadoff walk. Count in the favor of Devin Sawyer. Ground ball on two high hops to the left side. Going to second for one, the throw to first, squirts away but not far enough, and Sawyer will go back to the bag. A fielder's choice, one out, as third baseman Ryan Haskell with a nice play and a crisp throw over to Isaac Krivak to retire Tanaka, the lead runner. Jake O'Connor will bat for the second time. He was the first of four strikeout victims of Samuel Franco in that first inning when they stranded Sawyer at second. Devin leads off a first, has a pretty healthy lead over there. We haven't seen anybody challenge the arm of Jordan Delude, the BG catcher, as yet. It's always tough to get a jump off a lefty if he's got any kind of a move over there. He's looked over three times already. Doing some dancing. Sawyer stays put. Foul tipped into the mitt. Big swing by Jake O'Connor. Would love to hit, go for extra bases here and maybe plate Devin Sawyer. If he does, he's going to have to hit a, quite an impressive clout with as deep as BG's playing him in center and in left. Big swing, and O'Connor fouls it back over the seats here. Hopefully that hit an empty seat to the right of the press box area. There's very little grass behind left fielder Jackson Goldstein. Also fairly deep in center, Joseph Reine. The one-two pitch on the way as Franco stares down Sawyer. He goes. Decent jump, and there'll be no throw. Doing a good job of snagging that high and way outside pitch was Delude. To prevent it going to the backstop, Sawyer would have had a decision whether he wanted to keep going, but he's got a stolen base. Reaching on the fielder's choice, stolen base. Tie runner in scoring position as O'Connor with another healthy cut, fouls it off to the right. Two balls and two strikes. Chance to tie the game here in the bottom of the third inning. On this beautiful night for baseball, Friday night baseball here under the lights at Holman. And O'Connor, a strikeout victim for the second time as Franco went down and in with the hard stuff and got him to swing right through it. So two down, fielder's choice and a strikeout following the leadoff walk. And Samuel Franco, one batter away from getting out of another mini jam, throws strike. Oh, did he not call a strike on that? You could see the right arm had a mind of its own there as Jeff Kleiner stepped back and he kind of had to hold it down. It was really close. Apparently missed outside. Two balls and no strikes. The 2-0 on the way. Swung on and missed, strike. One, and certainly in a fastball count, Isaiah Hedquist got a fastball, but he just swung through it. Credit to Sam Franco. The 2-1 pitch, ground ball to the shortstop. Charging in Anderson, good throw to first, and the stretch two by Monaco helps to clip the hustling Hedquist for the third out of the inning. We've played through the top of the third. And here comes BG to the plate, trying to add to their one to nothing lead at historic Holman Stadium. More great baseball still ahead. It's time for the 
bottom of the third. Plenty of toys here on Nashua TV. Like it. So bottom half of the third inning, BG coming to the plate. They have sent eight batters to the plate through the first two, just as South did. The difference in the game, a wild pitch that plated Luke Anderson, who is on deck. Joseph Reine trying to reach here, the bottom of the order hitter. Kosei Tanaka, the nine hitter for South, did reach, leading off the top half of this third inning. He was cut down at second on a fielder's choice, and South never did get that leadoff runner around. Two balls and no strikes. Jake O'Connor working to Joe Reine. Pop up. That feels like it's coming right in my lap. And it is just over our heads in the skyboxes here at Holman Stadium. And fouling it straight back. Two balls in one strike. To Joe Reine. Hard hit. Smoked at the shortstop. Ward knocked it down, but he fell. He slipped. As he went back to get it with his arm, he could have taken a shot. But he took a seat instead, and it's a leadoff infield single for Joe Reine. With that kind of velocity, can't really in good conscience call that an error. As Ward went to his right just to knock that thing down was pretty good. It would have been interesting to see, had he picked it up cleanly, whether he could have clipped Reine at first. Leadoff batter aboard with a base hit. And the pitch. Gets away from Caleb Rich. And he couldn't find it. And so to second base in the matter of two pitches, a hard hit infield single and a wild pitch. And now South wants to talk it over. Coaching staff will have a meeting on the mound with their infielders and with pitcher Jake O'Connor. A one nothing deficit here for the Panthers in the bottom of the third inning and the top of the order coming up in Luke Anderson who worked a leadoff walk to begin the ball game. The wild pitches have been a bit of a concern for Jake O'Connor. Anderson was able to score because of two wild pitches. One got him down to second base. He stole third on a very close play. Pretty good throw on a slow curveball. Strike him out. Try to throw him out by Caleb Rich. And then a really heads up base running play by Luke Anderson because the, the wild pitch he scored on really didn't get that far away from home plate. It was about, I want to say, five or six steps to the right of catcher Caleb Rich. But by the time he picked it up, he lost the foot race going back toward home plate. Luke Anderson putting his foot down in plenty of time. Then the discussion that ensued was whether the pitch had actually hit the uh, left-handed batter that was in the box, Dominic Monaco. That was a foul tip of a, a, a running bunt, bunting for a hit there. It looked like on his own as he tapped his chest was Jackson Goldstein. Flight out to left his first time up, batting for the second time in this game, Jackson Goldstein. Oh, excuse me, this is... Um, This is Anderson, getting ahead of myself here. Luke Anderson, two balls in one strike. Taking the lead off of second is Riney, being bothered by Hunter Ward right behind him and swinging and missing at that good hard fastball up. Luke Anderson looking at a 2-2 pitch Upcoming here from Jake O'Connor. Checks the runner and delivers. Just down. Anderson laying off the pitch just below his knees. I wouldn't be surprised to see O'Connor come back with that. Be a tough pitch to hit if he gets it in the zone down there. It's three and two though here. The pitch. Strike three called. He painted on the inside corner about thigh high. And Luke Anderson decided that he could not hit it. He took it for strike three. So that is the first out of the inning. And Jackson Goldstein, the batter. Fly to the left his first time up. This would be a situation where if you're a good base runner, you might want to, ooh, almost a delayed steal there. And Caleb's going to throw it to second, and that's going to be an ill-advised throw as it goes to center. Tanaka's going to take a shot. 
and now it gets away and good backup by O'Connor. That one almost went all the way to the dugout. And how about Joseph Reine putting pressure on the defense, drew a throw on a fake delayed steal. Kayla Rich came out from behind the plate and couldn't resist taking a shot at second base, but he threw a difficult to handle worm killer throw that Devin Sawyer couldn't stop and went into center. Tanaka took a shot, and that one almost turned into a, a circus run scored. Instead, one out, runner third, less than two out. Optimal for BG to maybe get this run home if they want to try to squeeze him in. It's 2-0. and oh. Devin Sawyer in on the grass at third, and Isaiah Hedquist at first, but a safety squeeze might work. Instead of hard hit, base hit to left. Going to plate the run easily. Joe Riney scores on the RBI single by Jackson Goldstein, and it is a 2-0 Cardinals lead here in the third. BG playing the role of the home team, so... Isaac Krivak has struck out his first time up. And the pitch is grounded to the shortstop. Could be two. Hunter Ward to Sawyer to first. Headquist, good stretch. And it is a 6-4-3 inning ending. Double play. But the Cardinals do their damage. They get a second run of the game behind the fine pitching of Samuel Franco. We're going to find out if it stands up against a hard-hitting South lineup as we move along to the top of the fourth. BG2 and South Zero here on Nashua ETV. <laughs> Dean Adams will lead it off for the Panthers as we move along quickly to the top of the fourth inning. Only his second time up in this game as he was one of five strikeout victims of Samuel Franco. Franco who left a changeup over the middle of the plate to Devin Sawyer to begin the ball game. Gave up a thunderous double off the bottom of the baseboard out there in left field to Sawyer. And that really is the last remnant of any hard contact off of Samuel Franco. That was about 13 batters ago. Here's Dean Adams. Up and in with the fastball. One ball and no strikes. Dean not backing off the plate after that. Stands pretty close to it. Kind of reminds me of uh, Rizzo for first baseman now for the Yankees really crowds that plate from the left handed batter's box. The 1 1 healthy cut at a breaking ball over the middle of the plate. Just high, and it's one ball and two strikes. Franco so unpredictable. Good command of the breaking balls and the fastball. Throws a hard slider, it looked like away. 1 and 2. He's got a slow curve. He's got a fastball in, fastball out, a slider. What will he throw to Dean Adams? A one and two pitch leading off the fourth inning. Panthers down 2 nothing now. Swung on and missed strike three. The fastball over the outer edge about knee high. A beautiful pitch from Samuel Franco to record his strikeout number six. Grant McCubrey went down swinging his first time up. Trying to get on base. Strike on the outside corner. Elias Bork spinned a gem for Nashua North against this South team. And now South is on the wrong end of another pitching performance of a season by Samuel Franco as a Excuse me, swing there by McCubrey puts him down in the count. 0 oh 2. At the mercy of whatever pitch in the repertoire Franco wants to throw here, and it's a fastball just below the zone. A three pitch strikeout. So only about seven pitches in this inning now. I think he threw ball one to Adams and then struck him out, and then three straight pitches to McCubrey. He's down swinging. Hunter Ward 
Hit a lazy liner at the first baseman his first time up. And he looks at a ball away. South just about desperate for base runners at this point of the ball game. The 1 0 on the way. Nice cut there by Hunter, but he came up empty, fouled it right into the catcher's mitt. Kind of looked like he was looking for that fastball, but still couldn't square it up. One and one is the count. High in the air, left side foul territory. Catcher and third baseman look at each other and then camp under it perfectly. Ryan Haskell gloves the third out of the inning. One, two, three, go the Panthers. It's not going to be easy for Nashville Ooh, South, is no. it? Franco hey. looks sharp. Doesn't he? You know? No chink in the armor here from, no. from him. Not at all. Hardest contact way back in the beginning of the game, Tom. And I'm sorry you didn't see any action on the bases. Uh, yeah. Blame the pitchers. Yeah, I got to... I blame my camera too. I was out of focus for a couple of plays I could have had, but I mean, I got they the play. They a nice got, double play. I got the play at third. Yeah, I barely got that. I got the play at third, which I thought was big for for Gerton in, in terms of you know just keeping active on the bases and, and basically you know, you know an unearned run. Yeah. But that's what you need to do. Two in of a them, game. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what you need to do in in a game like this is. Force the mistake and be active on the bases. They, fought, you know, I, yeah. I figured they were going to throw down to second at some point. They did. You know, they threw threw over to second, and of course the ball went in the outfield. And, and yeah, you're going to do a snap throw. The better play is probably at um, yeah. first. You know, first yeah. to third, but not second. Right. And so um, that play, the very first run that was scored by Luke Anderson coming in from third with two out. It was pretty heads up play. It was a pitch that it may have hit the batter. Pete Johnson thinks well, that's, it did. That's what we talked about. Remember? Yeah, Pete Johnson thinks that it did hit the right. batter. Right. I mean, we talked, we, we talked about yeah. that was the argument. That was the argument. It wasn't yeah. whether he was out or safe at home. It yeah. was the argument was whether it hit the batter and then the runner wouldn't have been able to advance. Right. So. And we don't have the luxury of video replay, although you guys will at home on YouTube. That's right. Later on. John Collins along with Tom King on a beautiful Friday night here at Holman Stadium. And you know, Jake O'Connor's not pitching too badly either. No, they're not. He's able, not. They're, not yeah. they're not able, excuse me, they're not able to rack up a lot of hits on them. It was interesting that both pitchers saw eight batters through the first two innings, and the only difference before the uh, third inning was the wild pitch. But now it's two to nothing, thanks to a, an error by the catcher. Caleb Britch threw one in the center field, and Aided the runner to get to third. And on a nice summer night, you got a pretty good crowd here, John. Yeah, we do. It was much more than uh, after the first inning. It just they, they started coming in after that first People inning. People work late these days. Maybe they just well, made their way here. Well, kids. I mean, kids? they, they yeah. dinner and they uh, yeah. ate dinner and they came, you know? So a four-pitch walk. Let's see. Well, if you talk to people, you know, as far as O'Connor goes, it's his control, right? He's yeah. got... You know he's he's a little bit erratic now, and yeah. and with wild pitches here and there, and with a base on ball. And the thing is, is Gerton's made every one count. Yeah. Right? Now, what is what is um, Dominic Monaco want to avoid this time on the bases, Tom? Getting hit by a batted ball. <laughs> we saw him do that to end the inning, and we found out that the way you score that is the putout goes to the closest fielder. So would you agree that's the second baseman? Yes, that would have been the second yeah. baseman on that play. But you would also agree that ball was labeled for right field. Yeah, sure was. It would have been first and third. Now that ball is labeled for second oh, base, boy. and that's where it's going to go. Yeah, it's been a problem for Jake O'Connor. Jake O'Connor is, is erratic. Um, doesn't have command and sharp control and we've seen that before he overthrows he needs to shorten his stride relax a little bit more and because he's got good stuff right he's shown it and you know that that was a great you know one two three inning in the second it was a great strikeout of anderson yeah you know that that should have gotten him out of the inning you know and then he gives up the base hit so it's Feast or famine, evidently, yeah. for Jake O'Connor right now. He's a senior. And so Ryan is Haskell is the batter. And 
takes a ball inside. So it's 3-0. and Yep. O'Connor in danger of walking the first two batters here in the bottom of the fourth. Decent lead at second. Ball's low. Ball four. Four pitch walk again. So eight consecutive balls out of the strike zone from Jake O'Connor. And that precipitates a mound meeting. With James Guy, and that may be all for O'Connor if Guy is coming out and not the pitching coach. So we'll see. You're going to bring in somebody from the field to pitch? Might bring in. Uh, well, yeah, well. he's on the way out. Yep. That's it. Oh, it's going to be number one for the it's Panthers. Shaw. Shaw. Nick Shaw is coming out. Shaw. Yeah. Yep. More TV time for the talented Nick Shaw. You think pitchers are insulted by the term crafty? Crafty lefty? No. No, I don't think they should be, right? No. Was Tom Glavin a crafty lefty? Yeah, was, he was. Yeah. Sure he was. So that's what you have with Nick Shaw. I think they get more insulted when you say they can't break a pane of glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the case with Nick Shaw. Yeah. Very yeah. quiet kid, too, John. Very quiet. Oh, really? Yeah, don't yeah. get much out of him after a game. What, did you slip in the pane of glass on him? Uh, not to his face. I've, <laughs> I've, I've said it here. Yeah, right? you have, yeah. And that's, all, that's by design. But yeah, that, I mean, that's, what, that's the beauty of his pitch. I mean, that would break a pane of glass right that's, there. But no, he, wouldn't. He, the last one? No, that pitch right there that he threw, the warm-up pitch? No, not a chance. Oh, what kind Kidding of glass me? are you working with? No way. Tim? You can put some glass in front of that? The second pitch more than the first. <laughs> second pitch, yeah. But not the first. The first, no. All right. That one, maybe. You hear the glove <laughs> pop. You hear the glove pop. It's all pop. relative, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he does feature some slow stuff. And you're about to see it. Well, uh, the thing a lefty is, batter coming to the plate is, here. Is he, Brandon Rodgers. Yeah, if he's around the plate. Now, the yeah. thing, what, what Exeter did last year in the tournament game, they knew they were getting him. They had seen him once before. And they, you know, I think they looked at some video, but they also had somebody, you know, mimic him in batting practice and timed it. Oh, right, right. And they were on his stuff last. I mean, I didn't, and, and from the numbers, because I didn't see a lick of his, any pitches he threw in that, in that quarterfinal game, because I got here, I was at a lacrosse game, I got here, you know, top of the first, you know, I figured, out oh, there's a couple outs, and I get out of the car, and they're announcing a change in pitchers. I'm going, what? Did he get hurt? Then I walk in, and it's already 6 nothing. Mm. So, you know, Exeter in that quarterfinal game. We'll see what happens this year. I hope we get a home game with somebody here at the stadium in the first round and maybe the quarters, but my guess is it may be just the first round and not the quarters. And the goal is to make it to Manchester, right? The final? It's up there again? No, it's here. No, no, it's, I'm sorry. Yes, it the is. The semifinals are here. Semifinals yeah. are here. That's what I got to get On confused. a Thursday yeah. and then. Yep. Yeah, so here's Brandon Rogers, who is DHing for the pitcher. Samuel Franco just concentrating on pitching and doing a great job of it. You get the feeling that if they get any one of these two runs in, they could be daggers the way Franco's going. Bunt to the left side, and it's going to be a base hit. hit. They yep. better get to it, too. And oh, great Ward bunt. gets it. Terrific bunt, Tom. Boy. You called it. Yes. No one was there. I mean, he must have taken a look and known that they were going to, the way the South does it, that there would be nobody there. Perfect placement. The only one who really had a shot of that was Nick Shaw because he's a lefty that falls off the mound that way. Right, but the ball was hit too hard. It, it went past the mound. It was perfectly done. Base hit, bases loaded. So a freebie there, ostensibly a uh, sacrifice, and Brandon Rogers gets a base hit. And Girton looking to break this open. Yeah. Good nice pitch, pitch there by Shaw. Yep. The fadeaway, 0-1, and, and there you go. The purposeful non glass breaker fade as he comes up with the one on 0 and 1 carves it to the second baseman coming home good throw force out at home Devin Sawyer solid play nice play gets Peter Wilson the right fielder to ground out fielder's choice base is still loaded now with one out uh, middle infielders question do they want to try for two Jordan Delude, the No, batter. you know why? 
off-speed pitch, the ball's not going to have a lot of velocity off the bat, I don't think, right? Unless it's in the air. Agreed. I don't think you're yeah. going to see a lot of sharp grounders off of, Nick, uh, off of Nick Shaw. And as good as the fielders are and as far in as they're playing, they got a chance for a, a home to first double play. Yep, they do. So I, I agree. Hard hit, the shortstop, tough play. Uh, that was hard hit. And it hit the runner, and you know what? He's going to be safe because the fielder had a chance to field it. And I think it went off the fielder's glove, John. It did go off the fielder's yeah, glove, Yeah, so Tom. it was already touched by the fielder, so it, it's not going to. It was gonna, already touched right. by the fielder, and so even though it hit the runner, right. he's going to be allowed to keep his base. Yep. Should be. This, this should not be a question. Yep. Hit the, it hit the fielder. Wow, we have seen that twice tonight. No once kidding, huh? that not? it isn't out, and once when it isn't an out. Very yep. instructive game. So just when I say you're not going to get a hard hit ground ball, what happens? A hard hit ground ball that if they were back, they would have had a double play or a chance at one. Yes, high and they just ball. turned one earlier like it, that. Yeah, it's high school ball. So it, you're you, rolling the dice, you know? Yeah, exactly. That one's a good stop by Caleb Rich. 1 and 0. Oh. So the Cardinals do plate a run. They are up 3 nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. Hunter Ward went for the backhand there. He was going to come home with it clearly, but base hit or narrow, Tom? Oh, I got to give him a hit, I think. Right? Right, it was a, it was a good smack, ball, yeah. He fields in like that. Yeah. I think you got to give him a hit. Yeah, it wasn't really right at him. It was off to the right a step or two. So another infield hit in this inning for the Cardinals. Good swing, but just a little bit off balance. Joe Riney in the bottom of the order has scored one of the Cardinals' two runs. Let off the inning with an infield hit. Last inning and scored. That's strike. strike. Yeah, that had to be a strike. So let's see what Shaw wants to throw him here. Beware of the ball in the outer half of the plate because Riney could probably hit it. That's where he goes, just high. Just high. Now the count's full three and two, and there's no place to put him. So he's got to come in with it. Off the end of the bat foul. Three and two yeah, again. You see the, the, how difficult it is to time him. Yep. You know, you... Or guess. You're guessing yeah. fastball probably, and he does give you a fastball, but it's not the speed that you think it's going to be at. And there it wow. is. See? Yeah, Gets him a, way out in front. I can watch this kid pitch forever. I really can. Him and, him and Franco, you, know, you can watch them go all the time. They're pitchers. There's no doubt about it. You know, you got it. three and two time. You got bases loaded. And Nick Shaw just uses that adrenaline against you. If you come out of this with one run, you've done a pretty good job. Base hit or is it yes, yes. in front of the right fielder? And McCubrey throws it in. They're going to get two on this. I thought I thought Grant either could have taken maybe a kamikaze shot at the at the ball, maybe catch it, I thought or McCoub also just uncork I, one. I thought McCubrey got a real bad jump, didn't see the ball very well, and but that's his opportunity to light up the catcher with that arm. That it was, but I think he two was, outs. I think he was just you know a high school kid disappointed he didn't make the play. Disoriented like, a little bit. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was. I think with that arm, and as soon as he got it, high to left. Is he going to see it? Having trouble, and it's going to be a catch by Tanaka out near the, oh, the nice track. Catch. Beautiful job of tracking it and running it down. Kose Tanaka. Nice catch, but yeah. Anderson does the job for oh, BG he sure with did. the two-run single. But Major again, damage. Again, that ball was hanging up. McCubrey's running all the way. He catches that ball, I think. Yeah, he, lo uh, he lost. He lost it. Kubri lost it or something. He just didn't he play it right. He lost it. No, he just yeah. did not play it right. He had a chance to catch it, Tom. You're right. So, yeah, if no he doubt took about it. If you, and not diving either. He could have exactly, caught it on the I run. Agree. Yep. You know, just didn't quite gauge it right. Yeah, I don't think he saw it very well. You know, and that's yeah. uh, that's we. I've seen that all spring. You have. All spring, and it's going to be interesting when we start doing Silver Knight games how they treat right field with the right fielder in the sun in, in the first half of the season. Because in the second half of the season, it disappears early. But in the first yeah. half of the season. But those games start at 6 o'clock, remember. Right. So there's going to be a lot of right fielders having trouble with that right field sun uh, when the FCBL starts in two weeks from tomorrow night. 
New third baseman, according to the umpire pointing out. It's a defensive substitution for Gurton. Ryan Haskell. Well, Haskell comes back in the game. I oh. think they must have pitched run for him. Oh, okay. Something. That's what it is. You're right. That was all. Yeah. They haven't really changed their defensive alignment, and they also haven't changed their pitcher. Samuel Franco is cruising here now with a 5 nothing lead that looks more like 15. Boy, the way does, he's been the going. Way he's been going as we go into the bottom of the fifth. BG sending eight batters to the plate in that highly productive crooked number fourth inning to blow the game open. Disappointing night so far yeah. for the Panthers. Well, Luke know. Anderson's had a game. They're going to say no more Friday nights after the last. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Friday nights have not been kind to South, and yeah. certainly we've only seen them score, what, two runs in that game? Yeah, two, that and that was, was in that. That was on McCubrey's base, hitting the ninth in the bottom of the seventh. And, yeah, it was basically it was decided. Over. It was eight zero. Yeah. So to the felt bad for Borg. You didn't get the shutout. He pitched, right. He pitched well enough to get one. Top of the fifth. It'll be Nate Matson, Caleb Rich. Felt good for Finley though. Yeah. That, he's a kid who's been you know sidelined. Oh yeah. The better part of two se almost, almost two seasons with injuries. So, one ball, no strikes to Nate Matson, And that's a strike on the inside corner. Franco's had that pitch when he needs it all night. That hard fastball on the inside corner at the knees. He goes up with it this time over the inner third. One and two. Up, down, in, out. That's pitching, right? certainly is. Putting it everywhere, just like Shaw was doing. Goes right after him as he fouls it up the silo over our head, straight back. Still one and two. Aggressive pitching by Franco, too. He's not wasting anything. Nope. He's trying to work quick. The feeling is a breaking ball here? No. No, it isn't. And it's a fastball. Might have been above the zone. And Matson is pounding his fist on his thigh. He thought he should have had been on been on that one. He got the pitch he wanted. He got the pitch he guessed at and didn't get it. Didn't right. swing. Right. A little late. Now you take something off it. And there it is. And he take, did. Take, yeah, but kind of no slipped out of his fingers. Yep. No control there. So 2-2. Two, two. Might do it again. Battle here. Nate Matson. His team I put down one five down nothing. and away and see if he goes for it. And he does go down and away, and he takes a call third strike. That was a beautiful pitch from Samuel Franco. Target, Target pitching, right? Pitchers pitched Target on. pitching. Yeah. A low fastball on the outer half of the plate that if you're lucky, you foul it beyond the, you know, hit, hitting the first base coach with it. Or the so dugout. Or one, towards two, the dugout. three, four, five. Eight strikeouts for Samuel yep. Franco. Tom threw, saw this young man throw a no hitter earlier this season. Where's he pitching the, in college? Uh, he's not, uh, I believe he's only a sophomore or junior. Really? Yeah, he's an underclassman. He's not a senior. Okay. I mean, Girton is loaded with arms. They've had been that way the last couple of years. I don't know how that all transpired, but. In terms of having as many arms, because they had a lot of arms last year, and uh, and they've got arms this year. I mean, they were able to play four. You know, you talk about four games in a week; they can do it. He they played three games. They had the arms to go three days and three games last week. That time, Franco gets a little too cute with a high fastball and he issues the walk. Caleb Rich takes the walk with one out. Here's Kose Tanaka. That is the second walk. Yeah, and Kose had the only other walk. But here's the luxury of the five-run lead. I don't think anybody's going anywhere, right? Yeah. I think they're staying put on the bases. So, Tom, you're involved in the uh, Nashua Hall of Fame ceremony that we're going to be telecasting right after this game, right? I'm on the committee. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah. What would, would the highlight you think of that ceremony? Um, that we can look forward to on Nash Wee let's, TV. Let's wait until the, I'll tell you in between innings, all right? All right. As long as DJ PDP <laughs> well, I think uh, if, he, if he hears you talking about something like that, he'll let you, let you go. 1-0 to Tanaka, who hasn't seen many pitches in the strike zone tonight. He's only been up once. That one's up and in. So Tanaka, I think he had a four-pitch walk. Yeah, I did. 
uh, when he was up the first time. So and now they're going to go out and uh, give him a yeah. foul ball. And now going to talk to Franco. How many lefties are in the, oh, you got Dean Adams and Tanaka. I think that's it. As far as left-handed batters. And I'll tell Franco, you got a five-run lead. Yeah. And they do have some activity in the bullpen down in right Scott, field. Yeah, you know, Scott Painter's going to say to him, okay, you feel it okay, <laughs> but you know, oh, put boy. it over the plate. Can I read this on the air? So uh, Pete wants to remind us that it's Mother's Day this Sunday, so be sure to remind your wife to have all the cleaning and laundry done by Saturday evening so she can enjoy her special day. I can say that to the baseball audience and uh, hopefully get away with it. But maybe not. There's some moms out there watching this game. They're disgusted by that humor that's on. That's apparently on Facebook. TV's turned off all over Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> that's off. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So after the conference on the mound, Franco refocusing here with two and O oh on Tanaka. Ball three. The most, um, the, the last thing you're going to see is a swing here from Tanaka down 5 nothing, having seen seven balls. And yet, it's right down the middle, of course. Three and one. If I'm Frank, I don't need to throw it by him. I just need to get the ball over the plate. I need to guide it. I don't have to throw anything fancy. You've got Kose's, a five-run lead. Kosei's probably taking this one, too. Trust your defense. And he and takes a walk. Outside. He takes a walk. And that's two walks for Franco. Yeah. They're, I, you know what? I mean, the, and that's and, and, and that's bad yeah. in in this way. He walked eight nine. He did perfectly. Yeah. He walked eight nine. You've got to yeah. treat. You've got to treat eight nine like they're just like all the other hitters, but even more so, you you need to be around the plate because you need to let them hit it. They're hitting eighth and ninth for a reason. Let them hit it. So. Here's the top of the order. First pitch swinging, and he flies it that to right. That should be caught. It is. Tag at second base. Smart move there. The BG will trade that for the out. Yep. Leading 5 nothing as Peter Wilson gloved it in right field. Ball was basically right on him off the bat of Sawyer. First and third with two outs. I mean, we knew Sawyer was going to swing at the first pitch, right? That's what he did the last time. Yeah. Or not the last time, but that's what he did earlier with, a, with the double, the first pitch of the game. So here's Jake O'Connor, who's been a strikeout victim two times. That's and been a tough night for Jake, huh? Yeah. You know, as deep as you say that the BG is with arms, I think they, the South would really like to see Sam LaFranco not pitch anymore in this game. They could knock him out here in this inning. There goes the runner. They're going to take a shot at him at second base, and out at second base oh. to end the inning. I'm shocked that he was going. Why go? You're down five runs. Tanaka gunned down on a Aye. beautiful throw by Jordan Delude. So, Tom, you, I, you're I, not ready to put Jordan Delude in the Hall of Fame just I yet, but that was a great throw. That was a fabulous throw, but I'm stunned they tried it. Yeah. You know, I mean, right. I, it's, I, I don't know why. Yeah, any, any uh, baseball players in the mix in that uh, telecast we're going to see? Tonight? Uh, da, 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 baseball, baseball. Not that I. Uh, we uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, Jim Tebbets. Jim Tebbets. You know, he played. He, he was a multi sport. Yeah. Um, trying to think of who else now. But, but to me, the it, it was all about it, it, the fact that they had the in person induction because we did it two years ago virtually. Oh, just because interviews. of the COVID thing. Because yeah. of COVID, right? So the fact that this was the first in-person induction and the, and, the, and the nice touch was to invite that class of 2020 back. Um, they, and so they'd be recognized, you know, they didn't have, you know, they didn't get their plaques or anything. Those were already sent out and everything else. But they, they were, you know, those who wanted to attend could attend and be stand up and be recognized, which they did. But the fact that it was the first in-person induction and the revival of the Hall of Fame, uh, history made history. Right? Yeah. That's that's how I looked at it. To me, the best part was the opening when everybody was introduced one by one coming in. Sure. And to thunderous applause. And they didn't just go to a table. 
They went right to the front, and they all gathered at the beginning. And all were cheering for each other, and the whole crowd was cheering. It was sold out. To me, that was the best moment. You'll see that on camp. You'll see that tonight. Um, if you weren't at the ceremony and you're curious about it, check it out. It's uh, that beginning. You don't, you don't want to miss it, especially when if you were around for the 1987 girls basketball team. Okay. Because there were some, you know, they didn't have the whole team there, but they had quite a few members. You know, names that you're going to remember and, and people, people you may recognize, may not recognize. You know, because it was, believe it or not, you know, uh, you know, over 40 years ago. So, uh, the 2023 National Hall of Fame induction ceremony telecast will follow this game. We have it scheduled for 9 p.m., but it'll be after this one ends here on Nashua ETV. But it was uh, quite an event. Well done. And I'm not just saying it because I was on the committee. I didn't have a whole lot to do with a lot because of, because I was on a lot of committee meetings I had to miss because of games. Um, but it was just perfect. And he, and I'll tell you what, you know, Nate Maserol or Jason Roby, either one of them could take take my job because they didn't. You didn't see the questions they asked in the video interviews. As that is ball four and, yeah. and Isaac Krivak takes a walk yeah, and he's going to be pinch run four. Right. But the, you can tell by the answers that the questions are really good. Yeah. And the, you, you can, there's also a link somewhere where you can see all the videos at full length because they only showed bits of it mm -hmm. um, at the video screen. It, it was just a, so well done. But just to see all those historic athletic people there, you know, get their just rewards was, to me, was the best part. Sounds like a visual treat coming up here on Nashua TV. So Isaac Krivak, who was the only batter in the not eight batter three run party not to join the party last inning, starts a party of his own with a walk. Next batter pops out. Dominic Monaco is retired to Dean Adams. So one on and one out here in the BG fifth, trying to add to their five nothing lead. And here comes Ryan Haskell, who was the uh, batter that batted the ball off of the body of uh, Dominic Monaco earlier in the game and reached on a walk and scored in the three-run fourth. Checking in on the pinch runner, Kyle Young at first base is Nick Shaw. Trying not to give up any more runs here. Good healthy hack there by Haskell as he fouls it straight back. 0-1. Let's see if Gurdon runs a little bit. You know, I mean, they've got two innings to put away and probably want to see if they can get more runs. Especially with... He's either. going. Yep. Rich is going to fire it down there too late. And a little awkward slide, though. Yeah, oh, almost hurt himself there. Ryan, Kyle Young, see how he gets up okay. But safe. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I've yeah. got the slide. He's, he's on his knees, John. Yeah. He's two feet away from the bag on his knees yeah. facing the bag. It almost like he got caught mentally between a feet first and a head first. Yeah. Ground ball in the hole, uh, and the overspin eats up yeah. Hunter Ward. He even had a shot at third if he could have picked it up again. But. Yeah, I, but I, I think you've got to give him a base hit there rather than an error uh, because I don't think he's going to get the batter at first base. That was a really, like, astroturf, old-time astroturf grounder. Hop. And that we were just hop. talking about how nice the field looks tonight, but it certainly yielded a weird-looking high hop there. Well, the infield's always had strange bounces here. Yeah, and it's none stranger than the two we just saw. And so an infield hit, and first and third with one out now for Brandon Rogers. Or is this a pinch hitter? Looked like they were making a gesture yeah. to the Hammering, oh, that was 100 miles per hour over the head of Shaw. Fortunately, yep. goes over his head to center and just not wasting any time. Great hit. BG leads it six to nothing. And they're four runs away from ending this game. Good point. I didn't even think that was a possibility when Needed we started the way O'Connor was trading punches with Franco, ball gets loose from the BG bullpen. That was number 17 for 
That was Adam Weatherby. Adam Weatherby with that great hit. Wow, he wasted no time. Boy, and he just hit a shot right to center field. Yeah, one of the hardest hit balls of the game. See, Rich is tough. You don't want to challenge him, but Shaw is so deliberate. His pitch is taking a while to get there. So, yeah. you know, do you want to run here? Ground ball right That's side go and right nope. good range. Nice play. nice play at second base. Devin I thought Sawyer. that ball was going to go all the way through. Yeah, Devin Sawyer went a good 45 feet for that one. I think he got aided. Maybe the grass slowed it down a little bit. And much needed out but that's, that's a big play because what it does yeah. is it minimizes the damage in the inning if you can get yeah, out that of ball it goes here. in the outfield too that's a, that's a run that's a run at least and it's seven nothing and then you've got two two on and this, popped this in the air very ended. high pop-up tanaka might call everybody off but ward's going to drop it oh that one hurts that's two runs two and that runs is an error on an error on hunter ward and oh. so, BG Tana only a you know, two runs away from Tanaka the mercy What's doing there? I mean, I, I understand, but Ward had it all the way. Ward was under it, making the play, and Tanaka disrupted that play. John. He may have. Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. He did. Yeah. Ward saw it. Foul tipped into the mitt. It's a tough Joe error. Joe Reine. Hard luck error for Ward. Yeah, it's just not the South's night right now. Eight to nothing. They trail it. Nick Shaw trying to get the third out of the inning. Elusive out of the inning. And Joe Riney, the nine hitter, batting for the third time in this game. Singled and scored and struck out. Ground ball left gonna side. going to be a again. tough play. And it finds the hole. Two hits for Riney. Back to the top of the order. And Luke Anderson is going to get his fourth at bat. Leadoff hitter, you love that in a seven inning game, getting four at bats. You know that's probably means you've been putting up some runs. Yep. And crooked numbers in the fourth and fifth innings here for the Cardinals. Three runs in each of the frames. Double here could end it, Tom. It was Anderson who had that two run single in the in the uh, pre last inning, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. He almost ended the game right there. It was a pretty vicious hack. If he goes right center with two outs, that could be 10 runs. Uh, oh, 10 that's run right. Lead. You've yeah. got two on with a chance to run around. So if he puts it in a gap, that's the, that's the situation. He certainly tried to do that on that last swing. He sure did. And that's going to be tough to do on Shaw, though, you know? Oh, yeah. Lefty on lefty. Oh, yeah. That's tough. It's a tough matchup. Another mighty hack by Anderson, and he's mad he missed it. Yeah, he is, because Shaw it looked put like it, he timed it. Shaw put it right yeah. there, but that's just the magic of Shaw, right? Yeah. You, you know, he'll he'll frustrate the heck out of you. Gets batters to overswing. I a think lot he's got to just go slow here and, and get him, get him. Just looking. misses two yeah. and three and two is the count. The runners will be off with the pitch, so even more important here oh, to prevent a gap shot. That's just it. You. You load the bases here. You got the tie. You got the, the game-ending runs. Nope, that's not gonna. That should end the inning, but we'll see. Left fielder should take that. Matson with an adventure. He's got it. He's got it. Are you sure? Yeah, he's he got it. He does have it. Yeah. Because that almost ended the ball game. But I'll tell you what. Nate Matson with the catch. I'll, I'll tell you what, John. If there's something. In the air. I mean, pop-ups. Fly balls, pop-ups. Pop-ups, fly balls, they are all adventures for this level to the to the point where they shouldn't be this year. I, I just, I don't know if it's the lights that they're, they're not picking the ball up. I asked James Guy about that last Friday. He says it's our first game under the lights. Um, but, you know, these kids have played baseball before. So I don't know what yeah. I don't know what the issue is, and I saw it again. We it, look, we saw misplays on both teams with pop-ups last Friday night, right? Right. And then I saw it again uh, the next morning with Merrimack and BG. 
it was just, you know, I'm like, what are they doing to our game? You know, they, they, they're not, these are easy. The, I mean, look, I haven't played the game in a long time. You have. But pop-ups, you figure, are going to be caught. And they're 50-50 they're at best at the high school level this year. It's too bad. You need them? Yeah. yeah. I'm good. So we go to the uh, the bottom, uh, the top of the uh, sixth. sixth, and it's still Samuel Franco out there. He was almost pulled from the game last inning, but he's still in there and looking strong. I mean, the, I don't the know if he tosses. was almost pulled. I think it was just well, a, he had activity and just a message to no. throw strikes. You know? Yeah. There's still activity out there. There is. Yep. So we go to um, who's going to be up for the South. Will they be able to break this shutout? Gonna be three, four, five. Yep. I think, right? Oh no, that's right. There was O'Connor was, was at right. the plate when they had when the caught stealing. Caught stealing. So Connor two, will be three, up. Two, four. three, four. Yes. O'Connor, who has struck out twice, facing Franco, probably would have liked to see him get taken out of this one. One ball, no strikes. Inside out, ground ball off the body of the second baseman, and O'Connor will beat it out. We're going to give that uh, error or base hit? Error. There, yeah. He's, he's got to make that play. He was right there for it. Yep. So the leadoff batter's aboard for the Panthers, and here is Isaiah Hedquist. Strikeout and a ground out. Sure, the velocity is a little down for Franco, so he may go more to the off speed. We'll see. And Franco's pitch swung on and missed. <laughs> he threw a fastball, but it was, yeah. he was way out of the zone. I He's mean. got some movement away from right handed batters. Yep. Checks the runner at first and comes to the plate and carves it off the screen. Already ran into an out to end the last inning, and you can bet that yeah, well, Jake O'Connor's not going anywhere well, over there. Down very eight. active on the bet. He's very active in his lead. Look at that. That's a big lead, John. It is a big lead. Pretty aggressive for yeah, the no situation. Yep. That's almost like a pitch out there. You know, you look, you got two lefties in the game, so they're looking at you. They see you. They're not, you know, you're, you're right in their vi view, so you might as well make them nervous. Why has a big lead? That He's right got the foot one foot that, over the cutout. It's beyond it. And the ground ball to the left of the second smart baseman. Play. Yeah, just smart play. Get the sure out. No chance at second. Get the sure out at first base. So I believe that was the uh, pinch runner that came in for Krivak. Kyle Young makes the play to his left. The sophomore, sec I mean the junior second baseman. And here's Dean Adams. Struggle tonight for Dean with two strikeouts. In that cleanup spot, has to face the lefty once again. Franco checks the runner, trying to keep his shutout intact with one out here in the sixth. Misses high, and BG's bullpen activity resumes. So you don't have a game this weekend, so you don't really. You could you could throw Franco's. Not as long as you want, but you can you can get some mileage out of him. You don't have to worry Ties about that. Ties up Dean Adams as he fouls it right over the public address booth here at Holman. What are you up to this weekend, Tom? More games? No, I don't have any games. Really? Wow. Enjoy. Yeah. Just got to get around some roundup stuff, but no, I've I got to put the camera down for two days. The 1-1 one, one off the plate. Doesn't mean I don't have to work because I've got to post a section. Yeah. But at least I mean, that's, a, that's not too, too tasking in terms of having to go out and cover games. Including the game seven results. When which, which, we don't, yeah, which we don't know yet what time that's going to be. It'll all depend oh. on tonight's Warrior uh, oh, really? Laker game. Yes. Okay. So if Golden State wins and forces a game seven, ABC will want to televise that game at 3.30 and then the Celtics will play at 8. 
if the Lakers win tonight, then their that 3:30 window is open, and that's when the Celtics will play. Fly ball to right, gloved by Peter Wilson. Runner tags, goes to third. With two out, not a big play there for South, although they do have a potential first run of the game 90 feet away from home. Is that the first runner at third in the game? For South. Did Sawyer make it to third after that leadoff double? I don't think he did. No, three he straight didn't. strikeouts. Yeah, three straight strikeouts. He didn't make it there. Unless there was a wild pitch. No, there wasn't. Um, Franco has had very few pitches to the backstop. Yep. So that's probably about just, the only drama remaining here. Can I was they say you probably just, you probably just jinxed him right now? <laughs> Frank was upset because he oh. he didn't get that the pitch was up. Catcher caught it. He's upset at himself for that pitch. That's where he wanted that pitch to go, and now he gets it. Grant McCubrey, like Dean Adams, struck out both times tonight. And McCubrey could run, ruin another shutout, right? He did it last uh, Friday night. Oh, he night. was the one. It's the shutout ruiner. Specialty. Two and one. It would appear to be a fastball count. Let's I see, see if just Brandt go can at hit him. It. This may be your last inning. Just throw a fastball. He does, and it's inside. Yeah. Overthrows it. Three balls, one strike again. A fastball count. Question is, can Grant McCubrey square it up? Foul tipped off the catcher's mitt, and we'll do a 3-2 pitch here with two outs. And a runner at third in the south sixth. BG playing the role of the home team in this one. Ah, uh, see, he got away from the fastball, which he was always around the plate with, and then he... The curve drift, the off-speed stuff drifts in too far. Oh, he's going to make the change? Yes, yep. he is. That'll he be is. it for Samuel Franco. He'll be a little bit upset with himself that he wasn't able to get that third yeah, out. Yeah, yep, and definitely. What a it was great the, game it was pitched, there. though. It was there. So it'll be... There'll be a loud applause for Franco when he walks off the mound. Five and two-thirds of scoreless ball. You got a, you've got a lot of fans here tonight, you know? And you can hear it right now. I think both sides giving this kid a cheer. Yeah, I agree. That's some applause coming from our left as yep. well as the BG fans to our right. And well-deserved round of applause for Samuel Franco, the junior lefty again, sparkling here, getting the start for BG and throwing up a zero through five and two-thirds. Does it again. So let's see who we have on the mound. Came in from the bullpen, right? Didn't come from the position. Did come from the bullpen. So we'll see. He gets the number. 16. Allen Holmes, maybe? Is it? No, it's, yeah, it is Holmes, the sophomore. Yep. Right hander. He gets relief duty. Well, AJ Holmes pitched last Saturday. I saw him pitch. And he only had to go five innings. But I almost went down and kicked him off the mound myself. <laughs> Why? Because after Girton scores 12 runs, and they're up, I don't know, it was, some, it was 17 to 1, he goes out and he issues four straight no. walks. Well, you don't have to be a pitching coach to hate that. No. You could be a sports writer. Yeah, but he got out of it. Oh, he did? Yeah, well, I'm here, right? I mean, I'm back. <laughs> you saw me during the week. Otherwise, yeah. I might still be here. So. <laughs> How did he get out of it? Oh, I forget. Just threw strikes? Yeah, just. All of a sudden? I mean, he allowed one run. and Yeah. Might have allowed two. I'm not sure. 17 to 3 was the final, I believe. I had a stretch of four or five games in a row where the disparity in scores and lacrosse, softball, baseball was 55 to 5, 56 to 5. Wow. Yeah. Yep, 5, 6 to 5. So it's Hunter Ward. We had an epic uh, fast softball game on Tuesday night. We did. It was, it was well played. Yep. 
Now, beware of this. Gurdon had, a, I believe, like an 8 nothing lead. Franco pitched it. Oh, stop it. And they, really? They, and it was like 7 nothing, 8 nothing, and it was late, and they were like one strike away from, a, from the mercy rule. And it was turned against, into a game? It was against Spalding, and Spalding rallied back and turned it into a game, and I think they got to it. Why, BG won 9 to 8. Well, that would be something. Yeah. I know the umpires weren't too happy. <laughs> and, wow, uh, where was that? You know, I, I was just going to say that Jeff Kleiner, the home plate umpire, and to get a little tight. Alan Holmes are not on the same page right now. That looked pretty good, that pitch. Yep, A.J. Holmes got some stuff. Got a lot of movement on his pitches. That's high. And not getting the high call. And A.J. looking in the dugout like to say, tell his coach, I thought that was a strike. I think the last two pitches were strikes. And apparently they were high. So now south with the bases loaded. Yeah. And here's Nate Matson walking a strikeout so far tonight. South with their chance to break the shutout, and Alan Holmes fires one over the outside corner. Strike one to Matson. Looks like he might have to earn it here if he's going to get this first run in. Nope. Spoke too soon. One and one. Holmes definitely with the live arm as a sophomore likes to throw hard. The 1 1 pitch on the way. Foul over Tom. Just over me. Just over you. 1 and 2. Can Nate Matson square up a fastball? Because it looks like that's all that Alan Holmes is featuring right now. Just off the plate. That was tough to take with two strikes. I've done some uh, Silver Knights games where I think that would have been <laughs> called. Yeah. It all depends on the umpire's interpretation. That kind of a pitch. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Strike three. <laughs> Leave him loaded. He shakes his fist. It's an 8 nothing game, kid. You know? yeah. <laughs> it was a good strike. I think he was... I think he was shaking his fist more at the umpire, at Jeff Kleiner, more not not in a derogatory way, but just saying, "Ha, ah, I got you this time, right?" Yeah. You know, you can't you can't uh, you can't uh, take a strike that strike away, uh, strike well, out away. From also, me. too, I think he's thinking about preserving the shutout for his teammate, and uh, that was uh, probably a mental battle there after he walked the guy. On he's got so he's got a lot of movement on his pitches, John. Yeah. And and sometimes his command is a sophomore. His command is not the greatest. I believe Franco's a junior, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. We got we got it right here. He is a junior. Yep. You're right. Yeah. 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 He's excellent, and uh, still got another year to go of high school ball. So to the bottom of the sixth we go. Likely Bishop Girton's last time at bat in a scheduled seven inning game. John Collins along with Tom King. Our cameraman is Tim O'Neill once again here at Historic Holman Stadium as the uh, I don't know if the pitcher's sunglasses would bother the batter as much as they were bugging me there, but yeah, Jeff well, Kleiner saw him and he made some removal yep, from the brim got him, of his got cap. Got him off. Who we at? Let's see. I can't tell the number. Oh yeah, it's another pitcher. Yes, it is. So single digit four. Looks like it. Will be Thomas Campbell, senior. If it is four. It is number four, Thomas Campbell into the game, Tom. I haven't seen him all year. So this is the one on me. You will, I mean, maybe you won't be in the snow. You remember Bill Campbell from the yeah. Boston Red Sox. So Deceased, right? Yeah, yes. Yes, just, just just a couple of months ago, I think. So Three I, ago, I yeah. saw the concluding uh, pitch innings of the Red Sox 2004 World Series championship over the St. Louis Cardinals. Yep. Back when uh, Drew Barrymore and Jim, Jimmy Fallon jumped out on the field afterwards. Remember that in St. Louis? And in the room in the bar in um, in uh, Mesa, Arizona with me at the the ranch. What was the name of that ranch hotel? Uh, this was a Cubs stadium. I was there for a baseball tournament, and I was there with a bunch of guys. And in the baseball tournament, Bill Campbell was playing with Bill Lee. How about that? And they were both in the room with us cheering on the Red Sox. Wow. Bill Lee and Bill Campbell uh, having some cold ones. 
and enjoying that. Well, they were teammates from the uh, 77 team, 78. Yes, right? Soup Campbell, yep. It was an emotional moment for those guys. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Soup Campbell. So I'm watching Thomas Campbell pitch here for the South Panthers. As I link my Campbells. Bill Campbell, a free agent acquisition by the Red Sox in the early years of free agency. Yeah, that was a big one. He pitched well for them, remember? Yes, he did. I believe they got him. They get him in 77 after the 77 season. That like, sounds right. I think so. Yeah. You know, that was when the Yankees and the Red Sox were loaded up. Oh, boy. What a season that was. Yep. Big swing and a miss. They left a good Baltimore team in their wake. Jackson Goldstein. And then the Orioles took advantage the year after in 1979 when yeah. they went to the World Series. Epic it's battles between 77 the Yankees and Red Sox. 77 was a three-team race. Right. That was the year the Red Sox had so many homers. Butch Hobson was a big yes. part of that. Yes, it was. Yep, George Scott, Butch Hobson. Yeah, Hobson was batting ninth, and he had something like, what, did he have 30? 30 some odd homers, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. they were potent, man. It was yeah, great. It was were. fun watching them when they get going at Fenway. Yeah. They used to let you in for a doubleheader for one price of one admission. Oh, uh, you could get into Fenway now. What, <laughs> what, it, what it cost you for a hot dog if you could get into Fenway now? Yes, back then. And I remember my dad took me, went to a, a 1977 doubleheader where the Red Sox hit somewhere around nine homers in the two games, and Rico got a couple. Yeah. Our own Nashua's Rico Petroselli. Hope he's okay. I haven't seen him in a while. Is he on the 70s? I don't know if he was, was he oh. still with the, he wasn't with uh, them in 77. 76 was his last year, I believe. Are you sure? I yeah. think he was, I think his last year was 77. I don't. Oh, no, wait a minute. Maybe, no, maybe I don't think because, so. Because uh, didn't, uh, Hobson took his place. He, he didn't make it out of spring training. Oh, Hobson took his place. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, he didn't, he yeah. didn't make it out of spring training. That was an earlier, probably 1975 yeah. doubleheader I went to yep. where Rico went off. Anyway, we got a walk, and the leadoff hitter gets on. Good over-the-top delivery there from Thomas Campbell. Gets a strike on the inner edge to the three-hitter, Isaac Krivak. Or actually, it might be uh, Kyle, Young now. Kyle Young pitch hitting for him, playing in relief yep. at second. Oh, and two. Working quickly, Thomas Campbell. Looks like he tried to throw a slider there that got away a little bit. Up, one and two. Dominic Monaco on deck for. The Cardinals, as they all bat for the fourth time. Eight runs for Bishop Girton. About two thirds of the way through the season. There goes the runner. Swung on a miss, strike three, and no chance. No at chance second. to get him. No, none. One out. But they'll take the out. Yeah. It is a walk-off situation here. It was bottom of the sixth, but they got two runs. It is. It's a walk-off if, you know. It's a, but they need to get a runner, another runner. get another off. runner and another hit and, a, and a gap. Haskell is, is on deck. Monaco. Well, Runner thought about it. Now, yeah. if that ball was to the off the catcher's mitt, First to base the side. first base side, he's going to third base. Yeah. No question about it. Tougher throw. Pitch to Monaco. Rips it foul down the right field line. Got a big piece of that one. He was hunting that yep. pitch, but just couldn't keep it fair. But those years for baseball... 70, you know. Late 70s? Se yeah, 75, 76, 77, and 78 were four of the best seasons you're going to see in baseball. Oh, wow. With the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah, they were. You know, the Red Sox won. Now, the Yankees had loaded up on Catfish Hunter, Bobby Bonds. Oh, man. And everybody, they Catfish. were the favorite in 75, and the Red yeah. Sox just had, that was Lynn and Rice, the Goldust Twins. Yeah, you get Louisiana yep. Lightning. Ooh, oh, that's, that's deep down the left field line. Yep. That's a tough play. It's going to fall in there for extra bases. One run is in, and the potential game-ending run is at second base with one out on the ringing double. Opposite field by Dom Monaco using the entire Holman Stadium 
surface. Yeah, in that's that a bat. tough play for anybody. You're not going to get anywhere with that. That's a no. perfect Holman Stadium hit. A slicing ball towards the foul line in left, and there's a little bit of room there, and just you, you're not going to be able to make a play on a ball like that. That was just a nice. It was well placed by Monaco. Yeah, and, and now Haskell with a chance to end it with a base hit if Monaco can score from second. And it's a ball low and away, and you think Haskell knows? He must know. These guys play a lot of games, and they know, they know 10 is the magic number. And you know what? That's especially tough play for the left fielder, Tom, after he sees Monaco rip a foul. Ooh. Oh, and hit the bat. It's a foul ball. Hey, you know, coaches always say, get that bat out of there. But that's why. Yep. And even though it was it was a scary pitch yep. for scary Ryan pitch Haskell, from... it's, it's yep. strike one. Hey, look, it's safety first. <laughs> yeah. Safety first, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. You're not thinking about the bat. Yeah, You're just okay. thinking about your head out of the way. It's about whether it's a strike or not. Get exactly. out of the way. So one ball, one strike. Now you got to be brave and stand right back in there and look for a pitch over the middle of the plate. That's over the middle, but up. Two and one. Base hit. Run scored. Could end it. Ten run mercy roll as Monaco leads off a second. And the pitch is inside. Nice stop by Caleb Rich. He's been busy back there tonight between Jake O'Connor and now the relief pitching. Three and one. Hitters count for Monaco. I mean, uh, Haskell, but you got to wonder if he's thinking about just getting a walk and getting out of Dodge. Oh, yeah, exactly. The 3 1. Rock to left, deep, and backing up. Looking up, making the catch. It stayed in the park. And it, Nate Matson did a good job on that play. It died in the air. It died. It literally just died. It was like somebody had a string up there that held it up there for a while. I know, you know, wow. definitely wood bats have a sweet spot, but whatever the sweet spot is on the bat of Ryan Haskell, it wasn't there. Wow. It just missed it. It really was a good-looking uh, trajectory off the bat, but then, as Tom said, just died. Just out. died. I mean, it was. I mean, we're not even talking warning track. Right. And a jam shot over the pitcher's mound. It's going to be a tough play with the spin. Getting rid of it. Devin yeah. Sawyer, nice play. Bounced it right to Sawyer. He had plenty of time to make the throw. So, so we're going to go the distance. Yeah. Well, yeah, we are, right? Six and a half. It, depended, it could go even further. <laughs> to the top of the seventh we go here at Holman. And Bishop Girton with a commanding nine to nothing lead. Welcome back to historic Holman Stadium, where our executive producer, Pete Johnson, was regaling me with some Pittsburgh history in between innings. DJ Petey Pete, Pete yes. he was spinning some One and the same. There. He met Kent Tacalvi during yes. his time at Three the Rivers. The Sidewinder, and, the yes. Submariner. What's the other thing you call them? The rubber oh, band yeah. man. Oh, yeah, no doubt about Another it. Another one, yep. yeah. Yep. I saw a Teak. On Facebook the other day. Remember seeing Looking him. Looking his age. <laughs> remember seeing him pitch with the stripes across the caps? Yes. The old fashioned uniforms that the Pirates had. And I know you're going to get this one, Tom. The World Series winning 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. What was their motto? We are family. Uh, that's Willie, right. Willie Star, late Willie they never, Stargell. They, they, uh, they yeah. wore that out, man. Because that was the song right back then in the, in the late Did 70s. You were at Game 5, Pete? Yeah. The only one they won. At home. Yep. Okay, so they won that on the road, did they? Yeah. Yeah, they won it. I saw the Pirates. The Pirates won it all in 71. Oh, with Clemente. And they beat the Orioles. Last game? Oh, that's the one he ever played? Oh, man. That's so. Yep. Game seven. The that was Steve, Steve Blass. Yeah. Al Oliver. Good pitch on 3 Manny, and 0 there. Manny Sanguin. I mean, those are the names. And if I'm not mistaken, the guy we've seen here at Holman Stadium manage, Richie Hebner. Richie Hebner is right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Caleb Rich draws a five-pitch walk that was to lead off. my first real year as a big-time baseball fan. 71. 70, 71. Yeah. Oh, and Tim O'Neill says mine too. 
Yeah, first one he remembers everything. The Red Sox had a theme song back in the early 70s, uh, Boston Born and Boston Bread Sox, which probably none of them were. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> relax, good. relax, and put your feet up and be a Sox oh, Rico. watcher. Rico is from New York. I it's know. New York City. And I so know. was Yaz. He was from Long that's Island. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't think there was a Boston Born and Bread one in the bunch. Oh. It was good marketing, I guess. I don't know where Doug Griffin was from. Pudge was from New Hampshire. That's pretty close. He was on the, in the, I think he was in, still at UNH in 71. And A.J. Holmes is having trouble finding the plate. Yeah, three and oh. Holmes. He's already issued one walk. And again, you got an eight, nine nothing lead, kid. Put the ball over the plate. Don't try to overthrow. Don't try to Listen to Coach King. On. Just throw lollipops up there. Well, let him hit it. He's probably not nah, capable of lollipops. He is way off, and that's when you come out to the mound, you look down to see nobody there, and you say, <laughs> What's this conversation going to be about? Yeah, what do you, what do you think? The magic words. Yeah. How do I make him throw strikes? Yep. Yeah. Which he's capable of doing. It's a mental thing. We are going to see a pitcher go down to the bullpen. Yeah, you have case. to. You have to. You know, yeah. I mean, the kid is not throwing strikes. And that's just a lack of focus. That is just trying to put, make the perfect pitch and put a lot of stuff on the ball and a lot of movement that you don't need to do. Yeah, 19's not on my extended roster here. But uh, that is the number of the pitcher that's going down to play some catch. Look, high school baseball, it's never, <laughs> it literally is never over until it's over. Yeah, you know? it isn't. Not a chance. So with nobody out, and two runners aboard by the way of walks. That looks like nowhere looks close. Looks like another ball. <laughs> That's <laughs> what it looks like. Play. Devin Sawyer backs away. Back to the top of the order. Sawyer getting his fourth A-B of the evening. He's one for three. Game started so promisingly off his bat. He boomed one off the bottom of the wall and straight away left. And that was all that... Samuel Franco was willing to surrender in this one. And it's 2-0. and oh. Has he thrown a strike in this inning? I don't think so. Negatory, uh, 10 pitches. There's one. There is. And that is the pitch. All you do is you throw that same pitch over and over and over. That's all you do. The 2-1 to Devin Sawyer. No. Yeah, put a tail on it. Why? Just throw it right over the plate. Straight pitch. Doesn't have to have any movement. Three balls in one strike, and maybe one pitch away from exiting. No, good swing there I by mean, He's got Sawyer. great stuff. Yeah, you could see right there, he's, not easy to hit. No, exactly. When he puts it in the zone. Right, so just put it in the zone again. Now it's gonna take a while for that pitcher to warm up. Yeah. We may have a few DJ PDP to now and then. Oh, that's the right. rocked, but it should be caught, and it is. And it is. Moving in to make the catch. There you go. Jackson <laughs> Goldstein. Yeah. <laughs> Bounced back very well in that. Yes, that. he did. Got the job done. Forced Devin Sawyer to try to earn his way on. A little bit, jammed a little bit on that fly ball. One out. BG. Two outs away from a shutout victory here at Holman, leading nine to nothing. South threatening with runner in scoring position, two on and one out. And pinch hitter for Jake O'Connor, left-handed batter. Number 10 is Chase O'Brien. Junior, left-handed batter, looks at strike one. He'll be swinging away here, wide open stance. Just off the plate inside. And may boy. I say, Jeff Kleiner has called another excellent ball game behind the plate. Yeah, one or two. Let's not maybe one we, or two, we, we but that's we, I'll we, take it, right? We don't want to give Kleiner. I'll take it. We don't want to give Jeff a big oh, head. We don't give him a head? No, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't think he needs any confidence from me. He is an A-game umpire. Well, we'll see. I, you know, I'm sure we'll see a lot of them this summer. The FCBL, the Futures League umpire, who's yeah. uh, decided to go with three umpires again. So, three and, and three veteran umpires. And that yeah. means Kleiner should be getting a lot of games. The 2-1. Up and away. Uh, see that? 
curveball is not breaking. So yeah. what Holmes has got to do is say, okay, ditch it, right? Yeah. Wait till next time and just throw the fastball. Yeah. Don't even use science. Don't, yeah, <laughs> really. Or, you know, go. go with the changeup if yeah. you want to, but don't All right. All use right. the curve because he's not. And he snaps that. Oh, down to their last strike. No, it's oh, actually, this one at bat. Out. Sorry. It's only one out. Yeah. Oh, there's always a potential, though, of an inning ending double play or game ending. There is. BG doesn't have a double play yet in this game. South has a 6 4 3 pitch. Got Swung it. on and missed strike three. He knows it is. That's it. See, no. Yeah. no That's see why the, he's in there. Right. See, the curve is not was not was not getting there. He was high with the curve. Yeah. Trouble with the curve is the uh, moving line. It is. Set. Right. And so this this time he just decides I'll throw straight fastballs, maybe change it up a little bit here and there, but no, you know, no big sweeping curveball that's going to go high and away from the zone. So Nathan Smith in here batting for Isaiah Hedquist and looks at ball one. Throw to second base. Oh, He's going to make the third him. out on the bases. Oh. Oh, how does that happen? He's got to throw Poor it. Nathan Smith got will it. be deprived of the at bat as the it. game ends on a pickoff of the runner at second. All right, John Collins, we'll see you next week sometime. Yes, sir. Thank you, Tom King. Good job as always. Thanks to our cameraman, Tim O'Neill, and my executive producer, Pete Johnson, alongside. I'm John Collins. Congratulations to Bishop Girton, a fine pitching performance once again by Samuel Franco, who nearly went the distance. The relief comes in and they pitch a shutout against the Panthers by a score of nine to nothing. The 2023 high school baseball season continues. And I'll say good night from Holman Stadium, everybody. <laughs>